So here we are, getting ready to start the science section. Now the funny thing about the science section is that you don't need to know any science, or maybe you need to know four questions worth, maybe five tops. Uh, that's out of 40 questions, right? So what if you don't need to know science, what's the science test about? Well, really it's about reading graphs and using them in a way to look up information efficiently. That's basically what it's all about. So let's go ahead and take a look at opening this guy up. So as I said, 40 questions, you'll have 35 minutes to do everything there. Um, and that might seem really fast, especially because you have all this stuff to look through. But one thing that you can do to speed up your time and your retention is to not do a lot of reading. So like, if I'm looking at this passage one here, um, I've got all this kind of boilerplate stuff. So usually this little prompt, this little like summary of the experiment is good to do, good to read. Researchers studied how diet and the ability to smell food can affect the lifespan of normal fruit flies, and fruit flies unable to detect many odors, strain X. So immediately we would get that N is normal, strain is not able to smell. Um, I usually skip this like study description. At some point we're going to need to probably come back and check this out, but you can get really far without even reading any of this stuff. What you do need to understand is the graphs. So usually I'll take a second to look at the graphs and say, okay, what's on the X and Y axis? So here Y axis, I have percent alive. Here I have days. I notice that these two graphs look pretty similar. And indeed I have days and percent alive and the scale is exactly the same here. So these are comparable. Um, you'll usually have one figure after each of the study. Sometimes you'll have zero figures, sometimes you'll have two, so pay attention. But here study one refers to this figure. Study two refers to this figure down here. So what's the difference between these two if you have the same uh, X and Y axis? Well, I can tell over here, you know, uh, the between the figure on the left and the figure on the right, there's some stuff that's like the curve is shifted to the right on the figure on the right. So why would that be? Well, here they give me the key. This is all 15% SY medium. This is all 5% SY medium. So I'm trying to figure out what the difference is between these two graphs because they look similar. So this one is 15%. This other one is 5%. And then I look over here, and what's the difference within the graph, right? What's the difference between each of these lines? Well, it's whether you use SY medium. What's SY medium? I don't know, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, SY medium and additional odors, SY medium and live yeast. So SY medium and live yeast is the farthest one on the left. These are a little bit more spread out. So live yeast, additional odors, and SY medium. So basically, if it's percent alive in days, you know, these flies are living longer. I'm talking about this really quickly, but really you just have to notice, okay, what's the y on the x-axis? What's the difference between these two graphs? What's the difference within the conditions? Something that you can do in, you know, 10 seconds tops. Then we've got down here, study three. So strain n, uh, I don't necessarily need to read it, right? So here they've got different SY medium percentages. So remember we already looked at a graph with five and 15, but here there's a lot of intervening uh, values. So they go from three to 15. And they give you the average lifespan in days on the right column. Um, so N and X, we know this is uh, smell and no smell, basically. So then um, you can notice that as the yeast increases, the average lifespan decreases. This is in both directions. So I'm just drawing an arrow to show like, okay, well, there's a trend here, you know, more yeast, more, more sugar less lifespan. Okay, sorry for the delay. I had to go back and um, do a little bit of erasing here. Uh, in which of studies one and two did some of the fruit flies live for more than 75 days and what diet were those fruit flies fed? Okay, so this is something that we should be noticing immediately is that they're telling us to point at exactly studies one and two. So remember that we got three studies. Study three is this little table and studies one and two are the little graphs up here. So we want to find where uh, flies live for more than 75 days. So here we've got uh, the number of days. We want some percent alive after 75. The only graph that does that is this 5%, and that corresponds to study two, right? So we scroll back down here. We want study two, and that's the 5% medium. A lot of these are just simple lookup questions. During studies one and two, why did the size of the fruit fly population in each tube decrease rather than increase? Okay. So this is a classic sort of uh, answer pattern that I like to call A, B, and 1, 2. So basically, they kind of mix and match these answers. 
in every single combination. So what I mean by that is, you know, the they can either be about the birth rate or the death rate. Birth rate zero, death rate zero, we'll call that A and B. And it's because the initial population has only males or because it only has virgin females. So that's one and two. Sometimes it's easier to figure out one of these than the other. Um, so if the birth rate was zero, that means that no new flies were born. If the death rate was zero, that means no flies died. So if the population is decreasing, it can't be because the death rate is zero because you know the population would not decrease. It must be the birth rate is zero, the death rate is non-zero. Now is it because the initial population contains only males or females? This is where we actually have to go back and see if we can spot this in the uh, description of the experiment. So three tubes, blah, 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 then 200 virgin females train N flies. So we're using virgin females uh, rather than males. They're virgins so that you can keep the birth rate zero. <clears throat> study three def deferred from study, sorry, study one deferred from study two in much of the following ways. So we've already talked a little bit about this. Study one and two are different in that they have different SY medium, right? Um, not female fruit flies, we're looking for SY medium. So in study one, it contained a lower percentage of sugar, or study two, one contained a higher percentage of sugar. So if you remember, study one is 15, study two is 15, is 5%. Uh, it's got to be study one. <laughs> Suppose that an additional trial in study three, it's this one, had been performed using a 12% SY medium, a diet with 12% sugar, 12% kills yeast. The average lifespan of the strain X fruit flies. Okay, so we got 12% at strain X. So we should be looking at strain X here. And notice that there's not a 12% on the graph, so they're asking us to do interpolation. In other words, uh, to kind of insert a value between two values. So if I could interpolate a 12%, it would be like right somewhere in here, between this 10 and this 15. So because there's a linear correlation, more or less, with these average lifespan, we think that if 12 is between 10 and 15, the average lifespan value corresponding with 12% SY should be between 58.6 and 55.6. There you go. Researchers had predicted that decreasing a fruit fly's ability to detect odors would increase its lifespan. Are the results of study three consistent with this prediction? Okay. So decreasing its ability to detect odors, remember strain X is no smell, so strain X is the decreased ability to detect odors, would increase its lifespan. So if we compare strain X to strain N, strain X does have an increased lifespan here, right? They're living between 55 and 61. These are 41 to 50. So yes, it is consistent. This is this AB12 sort of pattern, right? So yes, it is consistent, but is it because the average lifespan of strain X fruit flies was longer than N, or that N is longer than X? Well, clearly it's that X is longer than N. Suppose the researchers wanted to determine whether a defect in the ability to detect odors, so this is their little keyword for like strain X flies versus N flies, would change the lifespan of fruit flies fed 15% SY medium when live yeast is added to the diet or when additional odors from live yeast are added from the diet. Which of the following experiments should be performed? Okay, this is a lot of stuff, but really you need to focus on 15% SY medium and defect in the ability to detect odors. So defect in the ability to detect odors points to strain X, 15% medium points to study one. Once you break down these different studies into their basic components, it's like, oh, you know, study one is about 15%, study two is about 5%, study three is about strain X versus strain N, you know. Results for which two tubes should be compared to determine how our reduced calorie diet affects lifespan in the absence of live yeast and additional odors from live yeast. Okay, a couple things, reduced calorie, and then uh, live yeast and additional odors, or in the absence of live yeast and additional odors from live yeast. Okay, this is written very confusingly. But basically, you don't want any extra stuff, it's just reduced calorie diet. So, if SY is the sugar yeast medium, it has something to do with food, this study two is the reduced calorie version. Let's see where we can find tubes. Okay, here we go immediately. Tubes one through three, tubes four through six. Um, so no additional substance was added to tube one. That means that's the one we're interested in. It doesn't have any extra odors, doesn't have any extra yeast stuff. So we want tube one from here. And then over here, we want the one without any extra stuff in it. So that's again, tube four. So we want to compare one to four. And that cancels out all the other stuff. It's just comparing the effect of 15% versus 
versus 5%. And that already brings us to the end of our section one. So I'll stop it here and uh, we'll pick up next with our uh, comparison passage. That next passage can often be one of the most difficult, uh, so it's worth tuning in to see how it works. Okay, hopefully this was useful for you, and um, yeah, I'll see you next time.